Good morning, saints. Good morning. Good morning, sinners. Good morning. Oh, well, let me try it this way. Let me try it. Good morning, souls. Good morning, Pauls. Saul, Paul. Ah, you know where I'm going, right? Well, uh, grace to you and peace from God, our, the Father, and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is such a blessing to be here this day, and, well, one big reason is this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Yes, indeed. So I welcome all of you who are worshiping with us here for in person. And those of you, where is it? Okay, some, somewhere, that one camera there. Uh, those who are uh, worshiping with us, connected uh, with us online. Or those who will watch this service uh, later today. So <clears throat> in that regard, I want you to stand, please. Please stand. Everyone stand, if you can, as you are able. Yes, I know some, some, sometimes it's difficult. And I want you to turn to that camera over there, that one. Turn around to that camera on that corner and wave your hands, you know, and say hello to those watching from home. Hello, everyone. Hello. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. <laughs> but also, I invite you now to say hello to your neighbor. Now, be careful. We're still wearing masks, some of us, and so some might be uncomfortable with hugs, so ask what they want to do first, you know, whether uh, fists, bumps, elbows, or a uh, hug. So greet your neighbor next to you, please. <clears throat> All right, don't get carried away. You may be seated now. All right, that was a kind of a warm-up for today, uh, today's worship. And you know where we are going. We're going to be talking about Paul's conversion, you know, on the road to Emmaus. No, it's not Emmaus. Jerusalem, uh, Damascus, the road to Damascus. And I think that every Sunday is a sort of road to Damascus experience for us. And I will explain later. Because I think that it is here that we encounter the risen Christ. We also do it in our lives at work, at the market, at the office. But as a community of faith, it is here that we encounter, encounter the risen Christ, commanding us you know, to meet those who walk along the road with us. So, in that spirit, I invite you now to bow our heads and, and pray. Loving God, your people have come here to worship you. We have come from different situations and with many different needs. And we ask in this service you will meet with them and deal with those needs. We ask that uh, you will open our hearts, our minds, our eyes to see you clearly. To receive your grace and transformation for our lives. And Lord, this is the day that you have made and you invite us to rejoice in it as we also are invited to this table in which you are the host and we are your guests. And we believe, Lord, that you invite us all because you loved us all, no matter where we have been or what we have done. So, welcome us, O oh Lord, to come and eat and be nourished. And send your Holy Spirit to, to take hold of us. To help us to see what you see, but also 
to be your hands and feet in the world that needs it as we go and share our own stories of redemption and conversion. Be with us, O oh Lord, and receive what we bring and the whole of who we are. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand now for the hymn uh, 103, Immortable, Invisible, God Only Wise. we come to a time when we share our joys and concerns uh, with our community of love and faith and I invite you to uh, share those as you um, receive the microphone I invite you to say your name and then um, share your joy and concern and we have the ashes ready for you now when you use the microphone place it uh, kind of close to your chin not to your mouth uh, so that we can hear you well I am Wanda, Wanda Iverson, and we are back from California. And unfortunately, we couldn't bring the sun with us. I don't know where it is, but um, soon we'll be here. I do have some uh, troubling news about Al. I put it on the prayer chain. Um, he, if you remember, he had prostate cancer and had surgery a few years ago, and he's been keeping up with his PSA. Well, it went up. So um, there's some kind of growth happening. It went from 0.1 to 10 and 11 and 12. So this is not a good thing. Um, he's going to have a, a DEXA scan, a whole body scan on May 10th and consult with the doctor on Thursday that week. And hopefully you'll find out that there is a treatment, there is something that he can do um, to stop this uh, growth of the cancer. So, un unfortunately, he also has <laughs> a hole in his retina in his right eye. Macular pucker, uh, which caused a hole, and so now he has to have surgery for that, which will be after he gets <laughs> his cancer treatment. So, it'll be a wonderful summer. But uh, please keep them, keep him in your prayers. Thank, you. oh, and me too. <laughs> yeah, Daryl Rathman. We have a visitor today. Uh, Linda Deming uh, is a new resident at Westbrook Senior Living, where I am. Uh, she is a retired United Methodist minister, mm -hmm. and uh, joining us today. Love her. Uh, Love her. Linda, it's great to see you. We were together uh, in one of the class, or the class that was graduating, I can't remember, it's been too long ago, but we know each other. Welcome, it's good to see you. Hi, I'm Dan Anulli. Um So I didn't get a chocolate bunny for Easter like I hoped for this year, but I did get COVID with Betty. So two weeks ago we had it, and we're just gonna make sure we keep our masks on and stay away from everybody. We're both. We went through it really easy, um, just like a cold, a mild cold, actually. Uh, that's good. 
Um, so we're glad to be through that. And the second thing is, is that we've asked for prayers for our daughter, Vicki, several times as she's been hunting for a job. And the good news is she was offered a, a full-time position this week, and uh, it ends almost a year probably of her searching for a good position. So we're really happy. Hi, my name is Margie Hay, and we are uh, Florida Snowbirds, and no, we didn't bring the sunshine either. But we are very happy to be back and asking for prayers for our son, David. He has two, a week and a half left of his um, advanced training with the Army Reserves in Arizona. He'll be returning to Illinois to his regular job. So prayers for David. Hi, I'm Mary Legg, um, and I'm asking for prayers for our mission team that's going to Panama. We'll be live, leaving this Saturday. Uh, Pastor David, Sonia, and myself, and two others will be flying from Chicago. Uh, we'll be working the week with the Nobi Indians, teaching them um, advanced health uh, directives. We'll be teaching them about COVID and respiratory illnesses and new baby care and all kinds of things. Um, so your prayers would be appreciated as we do our journey. Hi, I'm uh, Scott Marks. I got a couple things. Uh, my cousin Jean, who we've been raising in prayers for the past month or so, passed away Thursday. And uh, another thing, my mom is in the hospital right now. She uh, went to urgent care Friday, and they checked her oxygen levels and said go to the ER immediately because they were too low. So she was uh, diagnosed with pneumonia, and she's running tests right now. So prayers for my mom. Yes, I had the opportunity to be with Sandy uh, yesterday and prayers for, for these days as she uh, recovers and gets better. Um, also prayers for Doris Young, uh, who's still uh, in the hospital. Maybe she's at home now and she will be going to hospice. And um, prayers for Daryl Rathman. Uh, he didn't mention it, but... Uh, Daryl also is, is going to have uh, a full body scan, scan uh, to figure out what is going on with the prostate and because his PSA has gone up also. And he will uh, go through other tests. And so pray, this week, this is this week that you will go through all of them. So prayers for him too. I invite you now to bow our heads in prayer. God of the forgiven past and of the open future, inspire us to pray with our minds as well as our hearts, with our actions as well as our words. You have heard the prayers we have shared with our congregation today. And we pray for those who are going through a hard time, those who are they have to have important decisions, tough decisions regarding treatments. Those who need to discern what really matters, those who, who are, want uh, their health and hope restored. Be with Cindy, with Wanda, with Al, with Durl, uh, as they seek uh, this time of healing and to find out what's going on in their bodies. Provide for them the care they need through the doctors and through medicine and science, but also with your presence, spiritual Lord, healing their minds, keeping them calm, and trusting in your goodness for them. Be with uh, the family of Jean, who is now in your presence. Provide for them solace and comfort, but also that they may sense our prayers of care and love for them as they prepare to say goodbye to her these days. Lord, we pray, also pray for, for those who have uh, um, got, had received good news, finding a new job, a new opportunity to do things, for those who have been in, in Florida or uh, 
New Mexico or Arizona enjoying uh, time off who are back here. For those who will go, be going to the mission trip, to be your hands and feet, representing you through their actions and their words. Be with the whole team that will go to uh, the Nova land in Panama. Uh, bless them. May they be faithful representatives of yours, spreading the gospel of love and care through action, but also through what they say and do. And Lord, we pray for those who this day are going through personal crisis who are in agony of a spirit or who are plunged into deep grief and fear that nothing on earth or in heaven can ever heal their broken heart. For those who suffer from acute anxiety or depression because of this time under COVID, for those who have lost jobs, for those who are trying to find a new purpose and meaning for their lives post-pandemic. Stand with them, O oh Lord. Give them what they need. And God, we know that you are the God of infinite reserves. You have entrusted your people here with a massive responsibility. And with your help, we know we can do far more than is humanly possible. Without you, we will do far less. So fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be channels of your saving, healing love and grace. All this we pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we continue with our worship, uh, we also come to worship God with our gifts, with our resources, with the consecration of our skills and abilities, our whole selves. So I invite now the ushers to receive uh, our gifts and offerings. Please stand as you are able. Source of all our gifts. 
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give. We dedicate these resources and our lives to your honor and glory. In the name of the one whose reign is eternal, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Please rise for the reading of the scripture. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Saul kept, thre kept on threatening to kill the Lord's followers. He even went to the high priest and asked for letters to the leaders of the synagogues in Damascus. He did this because he wanted to, ar wanted to arrest and take to Jerusalem any man or woman who had accepted the Lord's way. When Saul had almost reached Damascus, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you so cruel to me? Who are you? Saul asked. I am Jesus, the Lord answered. I am the one you are so cruel to. Now get up and go into the city where you will be told what to do. The men with Saul stood there speechless. They had heard the voice but had not seen anyone. Saul got up from the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he could not see a thing. Someone led him by the hand to Damascus, and for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink. A follower named Ananias lived in Damascus, 
and the Lord spoke to him in a vision. Ananias answered, Lord, here I am. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. When you get there, you will find a man named Saul from the city of Tarsus. Saul is praying, and he has seen a vision. He saw a man named Ananias coming to him, putting his hands on him so he could see again. Ananias replied, Lord, a lot of people have told me about the terrible things this man has done to you and your followers in Jerusalem. Now the chief priests have given him power to come here and arrest anyone who worships in your name. And the Lord said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen him to tell foreigners, kings, and the people of Israel about me. I will show him how much he must suffer for worshiping in my name. Ananias left and went to the house where Saul was staying. Ananias placed his hands on him and said, Saul, the Lord Jesus has sent me. He is the same one who appeared to you along the road. He wants you to be able to see and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, something like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see. He got up and was baptized. He ate and felt much better. For several days, Saul stayed with the Lord's followers in Damascus. Soon he went to the synagogues and started to tell people that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Saul of Tarsus was on a merciless mission to eradicate the Church of Christ from the face of this earth. He was a persecutor of those of the way. You know, that was the early term uh, to describe uh, Christianity. In 1 Corinthians 15, 9, uh, Says Paul says, For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. I mean, he was such a unique individual. By birth, a pedigreed Jew, sailors for God and for the nation of Israel. By conviction, a Pharisee, who viewed anyone who challenged the traditions of the Pharisees or the law of Moses, as a dangerous heretic. By citizenship, he was a Roman. By education, a Greek. And Philippians 3, 5, 6 uh, confirms these all. Circumcised on the eighth day, you know, the proper day, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, you know, A Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. Wow. Very devout Jew. And he believed that anyone who followed Jesus Christ and dared to speak his name was a blasphemer, and their movement must be put down. We hear, we read in Acts 26.10, that says, I not only locked up many of the saints in prison after receiving authority from the chief priests, but when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. I mean, that is who Saul of Tarsus was, and that's what he was doing. I mean, he did evil things, evil deeds against Christians in the name of the God of the Bible. Now, Saul first was introduced uh, to us in Acts 7. As an angry mob was picking up the stones uh, with which to kill Stephen after his uh, rousing and fiery sermon. Acts 7, 58 says that there lay their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. I mean... They did that because it is very hard to throw stones well and, you know, with your coat on, you know, with 
with your coat off, you, you can shoot well. And, and they, wanted to, they killed Stephen. In chapter 8, verse 1 begins, Saul was in, in hearty agreement with putting him to death, meaning Stephen. So here in chapter 9, Saul hears that the Jesus movement has spread into Damascus. So he secures permission from the religious elites to go there to hunt them down. But something happened on the way to Damascus that Saul did not intend to happen. He met the Lord Jesus Christ. The very one he was persecuting. And route to Damascus, you know, is where serious change happened for, for Saul. God knocks Saul off his high horse. I mean, he wasn't looking for Christ. But Christ was looking for him. Because only God, only God could save a man like Saul. And as it turns out, you know, that's exactly what God did. The bigot, the zealot, the religious fanatic, the Christian hater was transformed into Paul, the follower of Jesus, the demon slayer, the truth seeker, the spirit filled disciple. Have you ever been in your own walk to your own road, Damascus Road? Have you had your own Damascus Road experience? You know, because Damascus is an intersection, a crossroad, if you will. It is here that, that uh, he switched from Saul to Paul. I mean, before his conversion, Saul had no sense of his need of salvation and no inner voice calling him to come to Christ. I mean, he was lost, but he didn't know it. And on the road to Damascus, he experienced divine change. So why do we tell this story? What does this tell us? Well, it tells us that nobody is beyond the reach of our Lord Jesus Christ, not even Saul. Because when the Lord saves the chiefs of sinners, which Paul calls himself, he can save anybody. Right? I mean, look at us here. We all here have a past. Right? I have, I have said many times to you that, you know, sinners have a bad past. But they have a future too. And some of us have heavy baggage with us. But there is no case too hopeless for God. If God can save Saul, he can save us. He can save anybody. I mean, and nobody, nobody could have predicted that, that Saul was going to be transformed. I mean, not 10 minutes before this happened, not 5 seconds before this happened, because nobody believed that this could happen. And God knocked him off his horse, and he repented and believed. He was forgiven by Jesus, justified by grace, reconciled to God, redeemed, restored, converted, and his life was radically changed. From Saul, he became Paul, the, the, the inspired author of 13 books that shape our theology, our all understanding of the gospel. If Christ, can, if Christ can save Paul, if God can save Paul, he can save you, us, you and me, to become disciples. Well, well you might say, well, you know, I'm not Paul. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not Paul, you know. You might say that. Maybe you are saying, well, I'm not Paul, I'm a nobody. Well, we might be a nobody, but we are an indispensable nobody. I mean, remember Ananias? I believe the conversion of Saul 
would have died stillborn in that room in Damascus if it weren't for Ananias who heeded the call of God to go and pray with him, for him. If, if it weren't for Ananias, Saul would have been alone and blind and lost there in that room in that prison cell. In that darkness. And Ananias follows God's command. And he went to, to Saul and told him to get baptized, wash away his sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And, you know, Ananias brings this persecutor of Christians into their midst, into their, you know, uh, church, the Damascus church. And they didn't say to, to Ananias, Ananias, you know, this is not our project. This is your project. Uh, we never authorized this on, in committee, so um, you have to look for it yourself. You know, you take care of that, that situation. Because we have to look for our children first. Instead, they stuck by the former aggressor when the authorities came looking for him. And helped him escape. And I believe that many of you are Ananias. Oh yeah. You have brought the souls of the world home with us. And when you have done so, the church has gained disciples we most need in this age. Saul became Paul. And us, indispensable nobodies, can become the Ananias of the world so that those who meet Jesus on the road to Damascus might, might hear the gospel, believe the gospel, and obey the gospel and say, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greeks. Those of you who can say, if God is for us, who can be against us? For there is no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Maybe your conversion was not like Paul's conversion. As I said before, we always have had a past that was not maybe walking with the Lord. And so that's why I say that every Sunday is a sort of Damascus Road experience for us. Because many of us sometimes forget that we walk with the Lord. We forget who we are and whose we are. We forget. During the week, and during the week, we, we, can, we become the, the devil. And here we are, this day, together as a faith community where we are accepted, where our past does not define us, not even our present, because we have a future as people of God, as children, as beloved. My brothers and sisters, Paul became the greatest theologian, the greatest uh, uh, follower of Christ, the prophet, the apostle. Because it is because of him, I personally follow Jesus. And I hope that as we learn more of him, we can follow Jesus each and every day. And that we could rescue the souls that are in our world, in our families, dealing with addiction, dealing with personal crisis, and bring them to the fold of the community of faith. Amen. I invite the communion stewards now to come up to the front, please, as we get ready for the sacrament of Holy Communion.
Today we will have two stations, uh, and we will begin in, on this side and this side first. And we will have gluten-free for those of you who are this and necessity here in the middle. Uh, and so you don't need to uh, line up for, for the two other stations. If you need gluten-free, just come to the middle right away. And um, we will be wearing our masks and gloves to serve you the bread. You will receive the bread, eat the bread, then you will receive the cup, and you will uh, drink the cup, drink, drink the juice of the cup, not the cup, right? Um, <laughs> And then dispose of the cups in those uh, bowls there uh, with the napkins. And so now I invite you to follow the liturgy on the screens on page, or on page 13 of your hymnals. And I remind you that, that this is the table of the Lord. As I have said many times, not of the United Methodist Church. This is the table where you are invited, not because of your merits, not because of what you have done, but because God loves you, but because God cares for you, but because love is in charge of the invitation of the guests this morning. Oops, I forgot myself. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, deliver us from slavery to sin and death, and may with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving is a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit and us gather here. On these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you.
invite you to stand now and to and join our voices in the closing hymn. guided by God's word that you may bear good fruit. May your work and your uh, relationships reflect Christ's constant presence in the days of this week. May you be an Ananias to the souls of the world and maybe you, have, you can master the courage to be like Paul, to preach the good news, the gospel, to those you encounter each and every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.